precious name of the Lamb, Jesus. Father, we come knowing that you hold tomorrow, you hold yesterday, you hold today. Father, you're the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Father, we ask you to bless every listener that may hear our message, whether it be by uh, video, whether it be by audio, or whether they read our books. Oh, Father, we ask you to strengthen them in their knowledge and understanding of your word. Father, I ask you to bless your manservant, even right now, as I proclaim your good news, which is the word of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Uh, turn with me in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and uh, we will begin reading from verse 5 on. We we'll preach four messages today. This is our fourth message. We have completed three, but this is the fourth message now. And it reads, Ephesians 5 and 1, Be ye therefore followers of God, uh -huh. not of the devil, not of grandma, not of grandpa. Yes, they told you about the the Lord, but be followers of God. Yes, we can trust people, but stay with the book. In case they deviate anywhere, you'll be in the right order. Followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also uh -huh, have loved us. And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice for, listen to me real good, a offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Now our subject will be tonight, be ye therefore followers of God. And my subtopic is truth in love. As we look at this scenario of what God have to say about his creation and why is it important that we be followers of God. As dear children, this only means uh, this is a love letter from 
the great apostle Paul to the church as he was projecting the order that the children of God should walk in. You know, when you love someone, you say, my dear wrist darling, or my dear sweetheart. So Paul was saying, uh, let's walk with God as dear children. Then he looked at walking. He don't want us to run, he wants us to walk. Walk in love. So that we are not speeding so fast that we cannot uh, take time to follow the road signs to heaven. Gentleness, kindness, long suffering, meekness, forgiving, loving, having joy in our life. Ultimately, the love of God in operation. So Paul was looking at this and he said, but fornication, now if you're going to bring something that's going to be sweet and smelling good before God, you know it can't be fornication. It's not going to smell too good in God knows. Filthiness of the flesh. Then it goes on to say, but fornication and all uncleansedness or covetousness, jealousy, fornication, having sexual affairs without marriage, worshiping a eye of God, fornication, and all uncleansedness and covetousness, jealousy, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. As you learn to walk with God and to demonstrate his miracle working powers in operation by what we do. God wants us to be as saints. Saints only mean the chosen ones of God to do the ministry of the works of God. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, fine, nor gesturing, uh-huh, telling jokes, lies, white lies, black lies, whatever the case is, don't do it. No gesturing which are not convenient, but rather given of thanks. God wants us to be settled in Him, that we will be of a soundness of mind and of a good report. That fifth verse of the fifth chapter of Ephesians says, For this ye know, that no homemongers, Someone that is married, going with a married partner, sinning against God. No homemongers, whoring after other gods, following the astrologers, worshippers, following witchcraft, following any lusts that would grip your spirit and bring you ultimate into a place of despair and depression and evil works. So Paul says, For know ye uh, that no homongers, nor unclean person, neither covetous man, whom is an idolater. When you're jealous of people, you are an idolater. You will kill somebody over what they have. Jealous is as cruel as the grave. So Paul was saying here, you're an idolater when you do these things. For no idolaters have an inheritance 
in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you. Now, many people were being deceived in Paul's day. For many were saying that Christ uh -huh, was to come. Many were saying that they was Christ. So Paul was looking at these anti crises And he spoke about the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of God as well. Let no man deceive you with vain words. What is vain word? Empty words. Word that has not the validity of God's truth in it, but uh, words that is uh, unnecessary language for God. Let no man deceive you with these type of empty words. For the wrath of God cometh upon the children people of disobedience.